way I step, hmm, something in my jeans. F O I N O Y, you know that's the team, huh? Peace. This is your brother Aiden X, and welcome to the processing class. Peace. This is your brother Aiden X, and welcome to the processing class. Today, I got me a young brother by the name of Demetrius. Yes, yes sir. sir demetrius x um i would like to ask him first um i know you was born in the nation correct oh no sir no sir. it was not no okay so what <laughs> what what were you before you before you became an foi and before you registered um what is your background i grew up in uh coming into uh christian churches with my with my family um, as I think a lot of us can attest to. And, um, you know, I had, I had, uh, a relationship with God always. And I know that to be true, um, just by the fact of me being where I'm at today, but, you know, um, like most of us, again, I didn't exactly know what to what to uh believe um i won't say what to believe i didn't have an in-depth relationship with god you know i was making i was making my own ways and my own relationship um and in some aspects uh but just knowing that there was a a higher power um that i was that i was in communication with and that was guiding me that's the best way I, I could put it. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. How has the teachings like changed your life? Um, did you have any, you know, mental health problems before the nation? Um, did you have any identity problems? Um, any vices? Um, a lot of brothers that come in, they was involved in even illegal activity before they joined the nation. Um, how was your headspace in your um, morals before you registered? into the nation or even knowledge yes sir come on with these good questions brother um <laughs> i would say uh all of them everything you just listed off there's there's uh if i could say this um there's not a single one of us who have come into the teachings that didn't have um all of those things that you just listed and even when you said mental health problems you know i wouldn't looking back the first thing that was clicking in my mind was, uh, I, I wouldn't say if I had mental health problems, you know, because we look at that and hear that and immediately think the extreme. Yeah. But, but you know. I, like anxiety, I, insecurity. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Oh, no, you're fine, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. All of that. Um, when you When you come into these teachings and it starts to clean away certain things that you didn't realize were there yeah that's a that's a that's a mental issue that's a mental um you know there's a lot of blockage that we have in our thought process that is the cause to a lot of these things that we do that we have to stop doing when we come into the teachings you know fornication um drug use just flat out laziness <laughs> you know all of it um but yeah, what was, I don't want to steer too far from the question. You said, what, what was Yeah, the just you personally, like you personally, um, did, what did you go through exactly? And uh, you can go into great detail. Yes, sir. Um, mm. Well, I was, uh, I was, you know, I will say, I will say this first to that question that I was Demetrius, you know what I mean? And I want to say that first and foremost, because, you know, there can be this thought from people on the outside looking in that, and this is for any religion, not, not even just Islam, that you have to be brainwashed or, um, you know, put on this facade and become a, a different person. I was Demetrius at that point, and I am Demetrius today but I didn't know who I was, you know? And that's the thing when we talk about knowledge of self, 
it's uh people think oh well i know who i am and it's like you we know ourselves better than anybody else but how much about ourselves do we really know that's the thing so you know i was i was smoking um not cigarettes <laughs> marijuana <laughs> we yeah. you know i was smoking i was uh you know going to um I wasn't really much of a partier, but, you know, I would go to places with my friends that, you know, I didn't even always necessarily feel like being, you know, um, just wasting my time. And in a lot of areas, I definitely wasn't a studious person at all. Um, I had, you told me, uh, you told me before we got started, you know, a little about yourself and how you weren't the best in school. I was terrible in school as well. I always hated it. I had bad grades and, um, it's because I would say that I didn't, um, I didn't like what knowledge this world had to had to offer me of this world. Now that I'm in a different world completely, like how it says, um, you know, being in this world but not of this world, I have a whole different set of of tools and wisdom now from the teachings. So. Um, you know, basically what I was before was just, just lost, you know, yeah. acting on what you see people doing around you. I always wanted, I, I had a conscious mind. So like when I, even when I did smoke, I was always the only one out of my peers that's like, you know, this is, this is turning into an everyday thing now. Like every time we link up, we, at some point, if we didn't link up to smoke, at some point while we're linked up, it's like, who's going to roll up? And it's just like, I would always, I always had that mind of like wanting to advance, but I just didn't know how. So, yeah. yes, sir. Uh, some people watching this, you know, they may be dealing with what you you just talked about now. Um, mm -hmm. Why is that such a bad thing? Smoking, you know, it comes from the earth. Um, as people would say, um, why was this beneficial in your life to give this up once you registered in the nation? Mm. Without giving too long of an answer, because that's so... <laughs> you can give as long as you like. The yes, weed. Sir. Yes, sir. But, you know, the weed, um, as I'm sure you could imagine or you may have witnessed, it can be an endless back and forth with the, with the people who will say that... Um, you know, it's natural and it has these benefits, this and that. Um, the reason I would say, and the same reason that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said, for those who didn't know, because he also used to smoke weed, because um, again, we're not angels that just fell down um, <laughs> out of the sky. Uh, one, the clarity is it's, it's, it's necessary. You can't, especially during this very serious hour that we're in, you can't be drunk, high, inebriated off of whatever it is. You know what I mean? You have to have a clear focus. And when I would say that to some of my, some of my, uh, my homies, my associates during that time, you know, they would always, it's always like the, the defensive response, you know, when you're really attached to something. And that's really what it is, just being honest. Um, I won't even say addicted. I'm going to just say attached, just to put it that way. But you uh, you defend it. And, I, and they would say to me, you know, well, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm more focused when I smoke. And I can still, what you get a lot of, too, is I could still do this and I could still do that. But you don't even know what you can't do until you've gone without it. And, you know, really start to exercise your mind outside of that state, you know. Um, and I'm so thankful to Allah that I, that I was able to, that I did listen to that voice, that, that messenger of Allah that's within us and not shut him up and start to go away from the smoking weed because once you're doing it daily and it's just a ritual, you really, it's another, it's another way of life at that point. You don't realize what it's like when you're not 
smoking all the time and when you're not in that state, if you let it get to that point. And that's why that's why some people do get addicted and don't even realize. But um, yeah, the clarity, smoking weed is completely different from, you know, using the herb in any other way, in a tea or whatever other medicinal aspect, you know, that can be done with the plant itself. But rolling it up in a backwood <laughs> in a in whatever type of leaf, paper, it don't matter putting fire to it and smoking it that's not what we need right now yeah yes sir. some people watching this you know they may agree with what you said um you know about the weed and everything but they may ask you know how in the hell did you have the strength to give it up um so i want to ask you what part of the teachings and how did the teachings uh make it easy or if it wasn't easy um how did it make you give that up mm if it did i i can i can i can give credit to the teachings um yeah and i but it was it was half islam was half of it and the other half was just sheer will you know what i mean because that's it's like what do you want to do what do you really want to do so when i was studying like when i had message to the black man and i was getting more interest in the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, before I even had the thought to actually register, I was still smoking. I was, it was lessened at that point, but occasionally I would still do it. And, you know, when I had uh, actually got to the point where I was like wanting to go to the mosque and like, um, I probably, cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to think right now, like when the last time was I actually smoked, like on my, my timeline here of coming into the teachings, I know I had been to a mosque once before and like maybe I would say a month or two months before, cause I know that it was like in the fall and I was with one of my, one of my friends. I had uh, smoked for the last time, didn't like it. I only, <laughs> I only smoked because he was smoking. I hit it a couple of times and I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm officially tired of this feeling. I want to be clear minded. I want to have complete, you know, that that God thought process where I can speak the way I want to speak, react, you know, and... <laughs> Like we're made to react, no sluggishness, no confusion, you know, munchies, all of that. It's like, I don't, I don't like this feeling anymore. I don't care for it. And um, yeah, and it was, I, the reason I say I would give half of that credit to the teachings and half of it to my will is because I knew what I was coming into and that I was much more satisfied with that and happier with that than I was with that other lifestyle. And I knew that was something that I wouldn't be able to hold on to if I did want to actually register and come in, which I was <clears> thinking of doing at that time. Um, and just like I said, just other than that, knowing that it wasn't ever meant for me, you know what I mean? It's a distraction, It's a, it, it inhibits you. So that's what I would say to that. Yes, sir, great answer. Um... Just going back on, you was talking about the sluggishness and um, laziness. Um, you know, some people watching this, you know, um, like you said in the past, you wasn't very studious before the teachings. Some people yes. watching this will, may never even see themselves studious ever. They probably never see themselves ever, ever, you know, even reading. So what was it about the teachings that said, I want to study. I want to actually open up a book. I, I'm actually interested in studying. What was it about the teachings that really gave you that feeling? Well, um, even when you was asking me that, when you said, you know, studious, and then you brought up reading, something yeah. that uh, we should consider is that we're we're born students. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You had to you had to study somebody to learn how to walk. Mm. You know, talk. So 
we're all studious. It's just, I wasn't into literature at all. Um, I take that back. You know, I would read, um, when I was coming up, there was like, you know, certain little, little kid, uh, excuse me, child, getting away from that word kid. Uh, <laughs> I won't explain right now, but if you know, you know. But um, I had I had like childlike books that I liked when I was in uh, middle school and stuff like that, or um, fiction type books. Um, but, you know, actually being a, what they call a bookworm or whatever, that wasn't really my, my thing. I would rather do stuff that to me was more exciting. And I'm excited now to gain knowledge that I know I can't get anywhere else. You know what I mean? Um, like how to eat to live, just as an example, like I said, I, I had my own um, journey of coming into consciousness before I found these teachings. And one of those was definitely me wanting to take care of my body and eat differently um, from like documentaries I saw and stuff like that. So I was getting rid of meat um, on my own and then coming into how to eat to live, which is probably my favorite because <laughs> I talk about it all the time, probably my favorite books from um, Elijah Muhammad. And, uh, you know, that excites me. Cause it's like, oh, I didn't know that, boom, 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 X, Y, Z. I didn't know that, you know, as far as how to even cook bread properly, you know, all the different aspects of the stuff that we don't know. You know, dropping meat was a good thing that I decided to do, but there are, other aspects, the the how the um one meal a day is just like I would have been still just eating healthy my way, thinking that what I'm doing is right, just freestyling it, you know, because I didn't have those keys that Allah gave us Himself in the person of Master Far Muhammad. So all praise is due to Allah. But yeah, um having having knowledge that you can be excited to receive because it's so, it resonates so deeply and you know that what you're reading, what you're studying is something that you can take and really just become, I mean, not, I'm not gonna try to put it any other way, just to become a God, man, just to become a God. The God that we are told in scripture that we are in the Bible and Jesus says, ye are all God, excuse me, not Jesus, was it? I need to read the Bible more. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> it's, it says, "Ye are all God's children of the Most High God." So, yes, sir. You know, yeah, yes, sir. Um, earlier, you talked about how to eat to live, and that was one of your, you know, introductions into consciousness. Um, some people watching this may say, um, "You know, what's the point of taking care of my body? We all gonna die anyways." Um, what really made you actually want to take care of your body and, um, what has been the benefits of that to you personally? Yes, sir. Um, not my, not my introduction to consciousness, but just one of my, um, a prime example for me of really, um, getting really into studying and reading more, yeah. but, um, because Message to the Black Man, that was my first book from the teachings that I read, which I would recommend that everybody get. Me but, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, you know, the whole I'm a die anyway thing. Um, it's a, listen, man, it's, it's, a, it's a chapter in that book called How to Live a Thousand Years. It's a chapter in How to Eat to Live, book one, that's called How to Live a Thousand Years. And I'm not saying that us today, that we can do that. And when you read the books, you'll find that out because um, it's not meant for us, but it is meant for the generations to come as we follow these teachings. So it also says in that book that there is no set time for us to die within that thousand year um, limit 
that is uh that is said in there of you know our bodies but it says in those books that there is no set time for us to die we decide when we die based off of how we eat and how we live our lives so with that being said was i almost forgot the term <laughs> i'm gonna die anyway so if that's the case if you could determine how long you want to live or how how long you're going to live why wouldn't you make it longer unless maybe deep down you're not so satisfied with what you have going on in your life right now mm -hmm. or if you or you you may be you may think you're enjoying the life that you have right now eating something that you know is harming you for you to be able to say that that oh i'm gonna die anyway you may be enjoying what you think is an enjoyable life in that moment for you to say that but if you change and start eating healthier and start developing different habits in your life and begin to see that different growth and evolution that god really wants for you i don't think you would think that way anymore I don't think you'd be able to say that. Yes, sir. Um, just talking about, you just said, you know, um, life being enjoyable for you. Um, has the teachings positively um, impacted your life? Like how you think about yourself, your confidence, your self-esteem? Because um, a lot of females talk about these things, but a lot of men don't talk about self-esteem issues, confidence issues, um, you know, mental health issues, uh, you know, boosting our positivity, um, did the teachings help you do that? Hmm. Um, yes, sir. I'm just trying to think of, you know, in what way I would, I would describe it. Um, because I was always uh, positive about, e even again, even before I had a really more in-depth relationship with Allah, God, by gaining the knowledge of him through the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I knew that he had my back. As long as I strived to be a good person, even though I wasn't entirely familiar with everything that I had to do to be a good person and be the best version of myself that I'm learning now. So I would always, I was always positive in that aspect, knowing that, um, you know, even though things seemed bad in this world, that God had my back. And, you know, I would always try to put smiles on people's faces. I was always funny wanting to make people laugh and give people gifts and do things like that. So I was always a positive person in that aspect, but now, knowing what I know of our, our future, you know what I'm saying? Um, as far as even like how I was just talking about us, possibly, uh, not, <laughs> excuse me, not possibly, definitely living hundreds of years in the future um, by following the How to Eat to Live dietary guidelines by, you know, um, obeying the laws that Allah has given us and losing my train of thought, but just, uh, just to know of the hereafter and what that really is and not it being, you know, what we were told by our oppressors that we would die and then all meet up in a heaven in the sky and and live forever and you know all that knowing what's really coming to us as promised by Allah um, that is a great deal of positivity right there just to uh, know what we're really building and working on in the nation of Islam and even people who aren't registered but are just you know who subscribe to the teachings who are just making themselves better people and separating their thinking and their acting from the ways of of this world you know 
it's, it gives you a, all I can say is I just have a different outlook. The more knowledge and wisdom that you get from Allah, who came in the person of Master Far Muhammad, it gives you a different outlook of everything that you're saying, everything that you're doing, and it's just joy. That's that's all I can say. It's just it's just uh, it brings joy, and it makes those difficult situations a lot less difficult. Yes, sir. Um, now, just going back to on the hereafter, you was talking about. Um, Donna Elijah Muhammad said that heaven and hell are not places. I mean, heaven and hell are not places. That they're just two conditions of life. Now, a lot of people hearing that may get depressed, you know, because when you a lot of people think about heaven, you know, they're excited, you know, to you know get to heaven. Um, did you did that ever depress you when you read the teachings and it goes into depth why heaven and hell are you know not places and they're conditions of life? Um, did I ever get you depressed or ever hit you? Um, like it probably hits people watching this. Yes, sir. Um, that's that's a that's a good question. Not for me personally, it didn't, um, because I love these teachings so much because I love the truth, and I always wanted the truth, and I think we all want the truth. Nobody likes being lied to. Nobody likes liars. At least that's what I hear from everybody, <laughs> that nobody likes liars. I don't know if they really mean that or not, because sometimes when we hear the truth, and not even they, I don't know if we really, really mean that or not, because sometimes when we hear the truth, we, you know what I mean? So um, I wasn't affected by it, but... I say that's a good question because I know it does affect some people because that's a whole like I, I I was at my I was at my uncle's funeral um the end of last year in December and um a sister had got up to speak and you know she was preaching that really hard, like really hard, and I hadn't heard it in so long that I didn't, I never even, that thought that something like that might be said, I didn't even think about it, but she was just like, you know, you're gonna, we know that we're gonna see him in heaven and and that he's la la la. And um, I was like, wow, but like, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna say anything, but I was just like, wow. Like, cause again, I hadn't heard that in so long. And I was just like, that's crazy. Like that's, that's that's crazy that we really um and i and when i say that's crazy i don't mean it in a like i'm saying i'm calling her crazy or saying it in an offensive way for any of us who still believe that but it was just a a full circle moment for me to uh to experience that knowing what i know now um but it's uh <laughs> to just keep that answer short no sir it didn't affect me um because again it made sense and it should make sense to anybody um when you receive that as far as life after death you know i can't speak on that but I know that it's not us going up in the clouds and um, still experiencing everybody that we experienced here and everybody's just there waiting for us. We're taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan that this life is the only life that we have, which is why we hold on so tight to it when something turns into a threat of our lives. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and like I just said, you know, how we're, how we're talking right now, we're quoting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, quoting the minister. Um, some people said, may, you know, see that and say, why would you guys follow another man? You know, um, what makes you want to follow another man? So I want to ask you, um, what made you want to, you know, follow another man? Oh, my goodness. That's a good question. Um, yeah. Because, because I, you know, 
I've I've experienced that myself with with um and especially with brothers, uh, I'll say that too, especially with, with men. Um, and that's like, a, it's, it's, a, it's in our nature. So it's understandable. Um, it's in our nature. I won't go too deep into that right now, but that not wanting to follow another man, first off, If we if we believe in God, just that I'll say that to begin with. If we believe in God, that's following a, a man right there. So, and we're taught that a, a true leader is also a true follower, because who's what's what's your example of a leader? You know what I mean? This whole self-made i had to learn everything myself and do everything myself idea that's being uh talked about today is fake you know god is our teacher <clears throat> and whether you believe or study scripture or not god does work through man and when I say man, I mean humans. So yes, he can work through women too. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is uh, there's no, there's no just, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do things my way. You know what I mean? That's essentially what you're saying when you say that. I'm gonna do things my way. And that's why we're in, um, that's, that's why a lot of us are on on Allah's bad side right now cuz we don't want to do things his way and I'm not going <clears> to <throat> I'm not going to uh apologize or you know pretend like the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad are not God's men that he has sent to us to guide us where he wants us to be guided right now. Um, you can study them. You can study their results. You can study me <laughs> and continue to study me um, because I'm, I'm, I'm a bearer of witness and I'm also proof and representation of why you should listen to them and follow them, even if you don't want to call it following, if that word just, maybe that just triggers you, but you should study and you should apply what those men have brought to us. And anybody who you can prove that what they have brought is in alignment with God and our proper evolution as a people, you should study and apply that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, now, just talking about God and, you know, so quote unquote religion, um, a lot of people watching this may have had dealt with a lot of hypocrisy in church or whatever their, you know, so called religion is. Um, why believe in God? You know, why believe or have faith in something that a lot of people would say you can't see? Or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so mm. why believe in God, you know, someone that we can't see? That's a, that's a, it's a deep question, but then again, it's not. Um, because, and I, I can only say, <laughs> I can only feel personally that is that it's not that deep only because of what I'm just beginning to learn uh, today through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, God, as people, uh, I think that people make God or just speaking of God, I think that sometimes it can be made to look like, like a game um, because <clears throat> there is a lot of hypocrisy in religion. Um, the one thing that I would say 
one of the worst things that caused that in people who haven't had a connection really built between them and God yet is the people who don't practice what they preach. And I'm not going to say that like I haven't been that person before. Um, but that's one of that's one of the worst things that holds back other people from coming to God is, you know, hearing the the hooping and hollering and um, you know, singing all the songs about God and Jesus and we gotta get saved and the, you know, <clears throat> getting baptized. And I'm again I'm not um I'm not making fun of any of these things, but I'm I'm speaking from the perspective of those brothers and sisters who see all this but don't see the results you know and don't see the people really changing other than just putting on a smile and wanting to bring you to their church or their place of worship and get you to hear it too and ultimately again put on a facade and begin to act holier than than thou but at your core it's not really reflecting um so that's that's why i would say a lot of people um just brush god off and don't want to hear about that because not only the hypocrisy but then of course the fact that we've been lied to we've been separated from the reality of god for thousands of years um and given a white Jesus <laughs> and, and told all these other lies about the heaven and the sky and things that we were just discussing. So it's like, it's frustrating. You know, you just want the truth. Um, and as far as the a God that you can't see aspect that you mentioned in that question, when you come back into knowing that God is a man, that God is man, um, yep and black man at that, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it takes study. That's why I said it's a deep question, but not that deep, but deep enough that I can't explain why you should begin to believe in God here. Yeah. But when you study these teachings in particular, the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, all praises due to Allah for how plain and simple it can be put back into our minds. Um, yes, sir. Or why do you believe in God specifically? Um, and you was talking about the white Jesus. Um, do people in the nation of Islam believe in Jesus? And do um, you believe in Jesus? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I do believe in Jesus. The nation of Islam believes in Jesus. Muslims in general believe in Jesus. Um, I don't know who it is this, that tells people that we don't believe in Jesus, but it's not us. So I don't know where that comes from. Um, why I believe in God, because throughout my life, um, and it's, uh, I, I look at it as a blessing, really, some of the things that Allah um, has just allowed me to see and recognize are from him and not just think it's a coincidence. Um, I talk about that a lot, that coincidence will stop you from, um, from seeing Allah speaking to you like plain as day or sending you signs plain as day when you, <clears throat> when you when you believe in coincidence, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that there is, there is no such thing as coincidence. You know, everything happens um, according to plan and according to what Allah wants to happen or permits to happen. Um, but I would also, I would also like to thank my mother as part of my belief in God because your, your upbringing definitely has something to do with it. So regardless of what kind of place of worship I went to, even though I, I came up in Christian churches, nonetheless, my mother still would talk to me about God 
and instill that in me, um, you know, so just not to leave him out of the equation at all. You know, I always came up praying over my food and I would be the only one doing that in my, in my, mm -hmm. in my school cafeteria when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? So your, your upbringing definitely can make it easier or more, um, it can definitely make it easier or difficult the way you were brought up to come to God. But regardless, he can come to you and will come to you when you open your arms to embrace him. You know what I'm saying? Regardless to whatever circumstances you came up in that would lead you to believe that there is no God or else why would your life be so hard or why would your condition that you're in be so difficult? So, um, yeah, that's, I, I always saw things um, of good and of significance happening in my life that I recognized as coming from God because that was that was instilled in me uh, from the beginning. So, yeah. And now I just have more verification of it. So it's not just about just being told to believe something and that's why I believe it's, it's, come, it's come full circle. Um, I just have to share this real quick. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to keep my answers not too lengthy, but I do want to share this because I, I was with my mother um, at my study group that I, that I, or my mosque, but it's just in study group status right now. But anyway, um, I was with my mother at the mosque the Sunday before last Sunday, and this was her second time coming with me. Um, to uh, hear a Sunday lecture with me. <clears throat> and I was on post in the sanctuary. Um, and for some reason, like whatever was being said during the Sunday lecture, I, I don't recall what brought this thought to mind, but I was just thinking about me and my mother being in our old church when I was younger. And when the pastor calls you up to, to uh, put the oil on your forehead and anoint you. Um, like if it's your first time coming out, you only have to do that if it's your first time coming out and then that would be it. And you wouldn't, he wouldn't ask you to come up anymore to do that. But I would, when I was little, I would come up and do it every time just because like, I just always wanted to be closer to God and be safe and secure with him and like prove to him and show him that I don't want to be uh, on the wrong side of things, you know, when it's all said and done. And it just made me uh, really emotional when I thought about that to see the full circle of where I'm at now, you know what I'm saying? Because my mother is in the room with me now at the mosque and it's just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? He's been with me all this time and this is where he led me to, to the, to the truth. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and just going, just going deeper into that God subject. Um, uh, a lot of people, you know, may picture people who believe in God and who have, you know, men of faith as being, you know, quote unquote, soft, uh, corny, um, you know, people, even people that's into consciousness, a lot of people may view them as corny. You know, there's a lot of memes and, you know, little skits that people make, you know, making fun of the conscious community or people who believe in God and yes, men sir. of God and men who choose to live a righteous lifestyle. Um, what would you say about that? You know, people depicting it as corny or soft or anything like that. Mm. Mm. Well, for one, um, <laughs> it's a, uh, because I, I almost wanted to say that it's it's warranted, but it's, it's never warranted to like mock somebody for uh for being for you know for believing in God. But again, the way that some of us portray that lifestyle and not actually live it that's what I think I wanted to say is warranted. Again, when you're 
um, you know, when 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 you're just seen just hollering about Jesus all day and you know catching the Holy Ghost while you in church and all that and and just just again of putting on a facade that then doesn't reflect in the way that you treat other people and the way that you evolve as a person you know what I mean what have you what have you really been saved from when when some of us say that we're saved because if you're still if you're still in the mind frame and in the ways of your enemies that put you in that in that in that mind state and in those ways that you need to be saved from then what have you what have you really been saved from where is your where is your proof other than this person that you turn into on sunday you know or whenever it is that you go to to your study um it's just a lot of faking that's that's what people that's what people make fun of and um, the soft aspect, that's a whole nother conversation in itself because God, uh, the, the God, the real true and living God, not the, not the mystery God, you know, that that's just floating around. Um, when you allow God to become more manifest within you because he's already there his essence is already in us when you allow it to manifest you do you do become more peaceful of a person because that's god's way it's peace you know and that's what islam is which is why you know we say we don't necessarily stress it all the time because it was given to us as a religion, but Islam is not a religion, it's peace, which means submission to the will of Allah, God. So when you become more of a peaceful person, some people look at it as soft because when you're in this world, you have to be extra tough, hard, and you know, no emotions all the time. So when you begin to become a nice, not a nicer person, but when you begin to do more things and acts of charity towards people, not always necessarily monetary, but just speaking kindly to people, wanting to, you know, help people more, protect people, and not just being selfish and hard and cold all the time, it can be looked at that way. Um, that's what I would say to that. I could say more, but that's a, that's one of the main reasons why it could be looked at is why religious people could be looked at as being, um, soft or weak or, you know, just wanting to follow something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I see on your Instagram bio, it says you're a comedian, correct? Does it say that? Yeah, it, it says actor, realtor, comedian, content creator, therapist. Hmm. Yeah, I might delete that. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but uh, but my I mean, question, yeah, my question just going into that, even if you not a comedian, um, sure. people that view the nation of Islam, you know, they may see the drilling and they see the uniforms and they see Farrakhan, you know, getting flamed up. Um, do people in the nation of Islam have fun? You know, a lot of people may want to register, but they say, I want to still have fun. I still want to laugh. I still want to smile. Do people in the nation of Islam have fun? Do you, do you guys, or are you guys just, you know, mean mugging all the time? Um, do you actually have fun? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of it. Um, like I said earlier in this interview, I'm still Demetrius. Um, with knowledge and 
with with more knowledge and increasing wisdom now but i'm still me and i definitely have fun and my definition of fun um has changed like i'm sure i can speak for others in the nation because you know what we think is fun in this world is just what we've been given and told is fun and told is you know this is your escape you know when you go out and get drunk and party or you know when you when you on when you on uh video games 24 7 and you know things like that what's fun to me now i'm gonna i'm gonna try to think of a couple examples because for real i the first thing i will say that i'm gonna still say is learning learning is fun you know what i mean um really learning how to become a better person that you can apply to the next day and get more accomplished and 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 make more things from your mind manifest into reality that's fun so that's one thing i would say um and really as far as you know just smiling and all that being being happy I'm happy knowing what I know and knowing that for one, just being alive, you know, that's always a reason to smile. And I know it sounds cliche, but really <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. That's, that's all I could say, you know, for a, another chance every day, you know what I'm saying? Because where we're at in life, we don't we don't have to even have the quality of life that we have right now but we do all these chances that you that you begin to realize that Allah has given you that's the reason to smile but um as far as the times when we're not smiling and when you see us going in on you know this world that we live in today and when you see Min the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan as you said fired up and you know yelling about certain things is because is is because we have a reason to. We can we can still the fact that we can still be happy and smile when we do in the midst of this intense, just so disrespectful of a war that we've been in for all these years now. That's that's another reason to smile, but when we're not, it's warranted because our people are dying unnecessarily at the hands of our enemies still, and now at the hands of ourselves because our enemies have been made manifest in us. So we killing ourselves through weapons, through what we put in our mouth, you know, um, it's, it's a lot. And when, you, when your eyes are open more and you see more what's going on, it's reason to be fired up. But yes, we still smile and still have fun in each other's company because we're not alone in knowing what we're going through and seeing the war through a different lens. Um, so, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, I don't want to take too much of your time, so I only got a couple more questions. Uh, yes, sir. The, the next one I would like to ask is, um, you know, you said learning is fun. That's one of the things that's fun. Um, people may, that's watching this, you know, because we've been conditioned. Um, a lot of people may say, well, isn't learning, isn't that acting white? You know, isn't that being white, you know, wanting to read and, or even just listen to a lecture, you know, anything that has to do with knowledge. Um, what would you have to say about that, about people who say uh, that's acting white? Mm. That's, a, that's a good one. First off, anything that you see white people doing is from us. Anything that you see white people doing is from us because white people are a part of us. I won't go into the process of the actual origins of white people right now. You can go pick up that book, Message to the Black Man in America by yes, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But everything you see them doing is from us, including the murdering, the, the, the lying, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all in us, which is why 
it was able to be made manifest in us, just like the God can be made manifest in you. Um, it's, it's, it's all what we subscribe to and what we choose. But without going too far off of the question, gaining knowledge, <laughs> I almost, I don't know, I don't know what to say to that. Cause it's like, I get why, I get why that some people do think that, um, because, and that's also their doing, you know what I mean? Um, but gaining knowledge is not something that's exclusive to white people. Uh, that's really, that comes from that slave thinking. Um, that's, that's where that comes from. Because at a point in time, as we probably know, we couldn't, we weren't even allowed to read books or we would get in trouble. You know what I mean? Killed. Um, so that's just something that we still have to work out of our, out of our minds, out of our DNA, that thinking that if somebody has more knowledge than you, or if you see someone wanting to increase their intelligence, their wisdom, that they're being uppity and stuff like that. No, because now if that person just wants to do what today is called intellectual masturbation, <laughs> which is where you're just gaining knowledge and, and you just want to flex it on everybody else and just beat people in debates and look smarter and not really apply the knowledge for your own personal development and for the better betterment of your people, then yeah, then you being uppity. But if not, and you're somebody who's actually for the people and for solving the solutions, I mean, excuse me, solving the problems of the world that we have today, don't, uh, you know, that's, 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 jealousy is what it boils down to envy and not wanting for your brother what you want for yourself um and shout out to my to my brother uh Reza Islam because yes, he sir. he uh he was an example for me of what our minds are really um a glimpse of because we're all, including the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because he said them himself, he said this himself, we're all in kindergarten in this stage of us um, being in the classroom of God. So that's why I say a glimpse, because Reza, you know, as, as much as, as I'm sure you've seen, brother, before, he, he's got facts on top of facts in his head, and he's been doing years of studying, but the way you see him demonstrate it was an example to me of, of what our minds um, and us just period in life can really start to grow into um, when we apply knowledge actually worth studying and not the garbage that we're given um, in the public education system, as they call it. Yes, sir. Um, the last question, this is the very last question I'd like to ask you. Uh, thank you for your time. Yes, um, sir. Thank you, brother. What would you say to men and women watching this or boys and girls watching this um, who are dealing with depression, um, suicide, or just dealing with life? Um, and what would you also say to the people who are thinking about registering or in that process of registering into the nation? Um, what would you tell them? Mm, for the uh, depression question and suicide, you know, depression, and I, it's funny you asked that because I, I saw you ask, I saw um, a clip from your interview you just did with Brother Anaz and he was talking about depression and it made me think about that, you know, depression, I feel like is just 
we have so many different emotions that we experience um, that we don't even have names for, you know what I mean? Because our, our minds are so complex and we still have so much to learn about ourselves. There are so many different feelings that we can have for so many different situations. And depression, in my humble opinion, is a feeling that comes about when you don't know how to handle um, certain emotions that you may be feeling. For example, you know, I'm so angry or I'm so sad and I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to rectify this or it's so intense that, um, you know, I, I just, I just can't handle it and uh, and you shut down and that prolonged feeling turns into turns into depression um but what i would say is that to fix it which is ultimately what you need to do um i cannot <laughs> with a with a clear conscience not tell you to call on God. You have to call on God in that moment. And even if I'm talking, even if I'm answering that question right now for somebody who doesn't believe God, believe in God, try it anyway and see what happens. But do know that you do have to do something to get out of that situation whatever it is that's causing you to feel like that, you have to show yourself love, which we're taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is duty, love is duty. So you have to be duty bound to yourself and be your own motivation and your own inspiration. Even if you can't feel inspired by anything else to push you, you have to be that and figure out a way out of whatever is causing that. One thing I'll say is that you have to be still. You have to reflect and just slow down for a minute and just think about what's going on in your life and what's really causing that. Most of the time you know what's causing depression, but if you don't, stop and think about it and then begin to find solutions. Because at the end of the day, everything that we go through that causes discomfort or dissatisfaction is to make us stronger. So don't give up. And suicide, you know, uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's something I could really just, I don't feel like I could really, and I never do, whenever the rare instance comes up that I have to speak to this, but it's not something I feel like I can answer quickly because um, it's, so, it's so much that God has in store for us in our lives that we can be nearsighted sometimes and don't really know what we would be missing out on to, to take it into our own hands to cut our life short. We really don't know. And it's, I, 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 I know because I've talked to people who have had those type of thoughts, how tough of a situation you could be in. You know, some people have gone through really bad treatment, but it's not because you were born to, you, you, you just got the unlucky stick, you know what I mean? And, and your life is just gonna be hell you, God doesn't put anything on us that we are not able to get past. And, um, you know, that's, that's the last thing anybody would ever want to do is, is to take away all that's on the other side of of that pain because it's it's much greater joy 
and life on the other side of whatever it is that you're experiencing, even if you've been experiencing it for years, then that means that there is that much return of, of, of joy and happiness, peace, the most important word I could use, peace. There's that much more peace on whatever, on the other side of whatever it is that you're experiencing that's keeping you from peace. So endure it because I can promise you that God is my witness as somebody who's been through their own trials as we all have, that that's true. So, yes, sir. What, what was the second part of your question? Um, to people that's thinking about processing um, to be a fully registered Muslim. Um, uh, well, if, if, if you're thinking about it, you know, don't think too hard. <laughs> go ahead and make it happen no but but really um um be, being a registered member of the nation of islam i've been registered for a year now as of february 20th mm -hmm. and i can only i can only speak from my own experience brother it's been it's been uh has been the best thing that's ever happened to me for one reason that I'll say, because we all need to be held accountable and responsible. Um, and when you commit to something, you know, I'm, I'm committed to this, I'm in it now. You know what I mean? I, I, know, I know brothers, um, I, or I should say, I've run into brothers, you know, who will say, oh, I, I used to be in the nation of Islam and and all that. And it's not it's not something when you start and this this kind of ties in everything that we were saying about religion. When you when you commit to something and it excites you in that moment and you wanna go into it but then you don't really give it your all. And it was just exciting for you in that moment. And then for you to get tired of something, that means you didn't really get out of it what you were supposed to get out of it. And you didn't really, you didn't really do and you know commit to it like you were supposed to. So I was just saying that to say you would be making a good decision for yourself by committing to something that if applied and taken seriously as it should be, will make you <clears throat> happier, bring you more peace, clear up any confusion, you know, that you may have in life about things that, that we don't even know that we're confused about. I hear that a lot from, from believers, you know, about how our, we have questions that are answered that we didn't even know we had questions about, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you can study the teachings and not be registered, but if you're thinking about processing and coming home to your own, accepting your own and being yourself, as Master Farb Muhammad put it, that's, that's, all I can, that's, that's all I can do is encourage you to listen to that God thought that's within you telling you to do that. You know what I mean? Because if you're thinking about it, or even if you're not thinking about it, but you're listening to this right now, the results are there. You know, that's it. the results are there. Study, study the, the students of the Nation of Islam. Study the Nation of Islam, and you decide for yourself if what we have is the truth or not. And if it is, who doesn't like the truth? Yes, sir. Well, I just want to thank you for your time, uh, for your knowledge and wisdom. Um, I submit to that God that's within you. Um, and I want to say, Salaam Alaikum. Um, I hope alaykum, to speak again soon. I definitely invite you 
back in the future. Um, I know we ran up on time. Um, yes, sir. Again, I appreciate you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you.